Hey dudes, Jason here with a bit of a different tutorial today actually. Um, so the content that I need to teach my students this term is cell animation, which I'm actually fairly excited to get into. Um, I haven't done it in quite a while. And um, I'd like to just throw out a disclaimer at the very beginning. I myself am still learning. I'm still follow, like following a lot of tutorials. Um, so I'm gonna put a lot of links in the uh, sort of description below for you guys to follow if like I start messing up or it's not easy to follow. Um, and then yeah, just um, like YouTube, self-teaching, always a good idea. Um, okay, so the first thing with OpenTunes is sort of going to their website. So that is opentunes.github.io. When you open that up, it's going to be sort of naturally set to Japanese and we can then set that to English over here. Okay, so now it's going to give us all the about. It's going to explain the fact that Studio Ghibli uses this software, which is um, a really, really cool uh, fact about it. We know that it is an excellent industry standard software now. Um, and yeah, it just explains essentially like what the software is and what it encompasses. And the really cool thing about OpenTunes is that it is 100% free. No monthly costs, uh, no once-off payments, nothing like that. Um, absolutely free. Uh, it also gives us an idea of what um, sort of effects we can apply inside of OpenTunes. Um, it gives us a description of what we're looking at. So GTS is a scanning tool that's been developed. Um, digital painting can be done as well, filming, uh, and then other features as well. And all of this can be found in the forums that are available to us. I'll show you where you find that soon. Um, but yeah, right here. So user community for English speakers, definitely check that out. Um, uh, sort of covers a lot of like initial issues that you might run into. Um, and then we download OpenTunes straight away just by clicking this link, uh, all the terms and conditions, and we can then download for Windows or for Mac. Um, very important for us to remember for Mac users though, that we need to uninstall previous versions before we install newer versions, um, because that's going to cause um, uh, sort of like an error when trying to run it. Now, GTS, that scanning tool, unfortunately is not available for Mac, it's only available for Windows, so I just won't really go into that just yet. Um, effects, um, so this sort of gives you a library of all the effects that they have, which is fantastic. Uh, and then it also gives you a sort of installation um, tutorial on how to go about installing these, um, excuse me for saying um so often, uh, <laughs> and installing these effects inside of OpenTunes. Okay, and if I jump back one more time, Kumo works. This is available for both Windows and Mac. And as you can see, this tool is dedicated for um, creating clouds. All right, so I haven't really gone through how to use this, um, but if your animation requires clouds, that is there for you. You can see that you can change where the light source is coming from, how it casts its shadows. It's really cool. Uh, from what I understand, it actually sources, uh, let me just jump back to the homepage. I believe that it sources um, actual cloud images uh, over here, yeah. Uh, sort of like cloud images, which it then sort of um, generates an actual sort of uh, image of, and then we can adjust that as we go. Okay, so when it comes to installing, if you try to sort of just click out of here and we recent downloads, it's not going to work. It's gonna give you an error that um, it's not from a trusted website. And what we want to do is we wanna come into either our recents or downloads, uh, control click, on, in, uh, on the installer and we say open from here. And that's going to then, it's kind of like opening an administration um, sort of selection with that. And then the installation will occur. Uh, it's already installed for me, so I can't really walk you through that, but the steps are very intuitive and then it will work and you'll get your little open tunes icon there. Okay, so like I said, plenty of um, resources uh, such as TJ Free. Uh, currently, I'm following all the tutorials for Noble Frugo Studio. Frugal Studio, excuse me. Um, he sort of covers pretty much everything from the basics. Uh, there is also, as you can see, I've got a lot of his tutorials up. Uh, there is also one by Dong Chang, um, and this is sort of um, the true sort of uh, introduction to After Effects. Um, no, wait, sorry, I'm looking, am I looking at the wrong one? Yeah, sorry, uh, full ray art. Sorry, this one is for uh, working with traditional animation. Um, this is apparently the true tutorial. I think he covers pretty much everything. It's an hour long, um, so I'd highly recommend checking that out. And like I said, um, I'm going to link all these 
channel sort of links in the description below so you guys can see which ones work for you. Okay, so next up we can just launch Open Tunes, and thankfully it's it's fairly fast. It's a lot faster than After Effects is. Uh, and the very first thing we need to do is we need to label um, our scene. All right, so I'm just going to call this Tutorial One. Uh, let's just go underscore one, um, and then I can sort of set my frame rate. Um, I can set my camera size, which we're not going to get into for a little while, so we'll cover that later on. You can choose where these scenes are saved to, uh, and then yours, uh, sort of like the dimensions here, will probably be in millimeters. All right, uh, it will still give you the resolution though. And what I'll do is I'll set this to pixels, uh, and I'm going to leave it at 24 frames a second. All right, and then create scene. Now, this is the interface. Uh, it can be fairly daunting. I know that I was a little worried about it when I first saw it, um, but it's actually not that bad. Um, it's, it's fairly easy to get into. Um, so to begin with, we've got a couple of presets, right? So similar to After Effects as well. Basics, cleanup, drawing, timeline, uh, animation, palette, X sheet, etc. All right, um, and what we're going to do, what we also have the ability to do is if I right click on any of these tabs, I can create a new room. All right, and if I then jump into that room, it is completely blank and I can then set up my workspace. So essentially it's creating a new workspace like in After Effects. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Windows uh, and I'm going to select my viewer. All right, so the viewer is what we actually now see. And if I then click and drag, you'll see that I get a red line at the top release that and it will now be the entire screen. All right, um, then if I go back into Windows again, I need to select my timeline next. If I don't create my timeline, I can't really place my tool panels. Not really sure why that's the case, but it, it is how it is. Um, okay, so I'm gonna place my timeline at the bottom and you'll see when I drag it to the bottom, for some reason, it jumps up to the top right corner. Now you'll see that my, select, like my mouse is still at the bottom and when I release that, all of a sudden, there it is docked at the bottom. So I don't know why, again, why that is, but that is, uh, that's how that works. Uh, next up, what I can bring is my toolbar. And that's obviously like all my brushes. And um, you'll see again, when I dock it, I get that red line. So that's my brushes, type tool, paintbrush, all that jazz. Uh, again, Windows, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna grab my style editor next. Um, and I want to dock that to the right hand side and this is going to be where I select my colors um, and um, sort of select what I want to do with my painting. Uh, then Windows again, I'm going to grab my tool option bar. All right, you'll see that it's blank unless I have one of my tools selected such as my brush tool. Now I can drop and drag that at the top of my scene um, and this is where I'm going to be able to change the properties of my brush. All right, so I've got my size options. Uh, I've got the, the maximum size and the minimum size. And I believe that that's going to be then if you're using a tablet and you're using the pressure sense uh, over here, that's then going to allow you to adjust your minimum and maximum um, line size. And I really like that feature. Actually, it's, it's really cool. Um, your accuracy, I'm not entirely sure what it does just yet, but I believe that it helps to smooth out or your smoothness rather helps you to smooth out uh, like your lines. So if I just sort of click and drag, uh, yeah, so you'll see there that it's, um, if it's sort of jagged or you've got harsh edges, uh, it smooths that out nicely. Now Command Z still does the same thing, but the shortcuts are very different. Um, and I will do, I'll put up a little spreadsheet at some point. I'll link like a, a Google Drive folder for you guys with shortcuts and um, sort of any interesting facts or forum um, downloads that I can find for you guys as well. Um, okay, so what I then want, I want one more thing and I need to remember what it is. Uh, command bar, toolbar, tasks, got a style editor, uh, palette, level strip. All right, so I'm gonna grab my level strip and I'm going to place it uh, on the right hand side there. And this essentially shows me um, my sort of what what assets are being created. Okay, so now you'll see that our timeline is horizontal, which is different to our basics, which is vertical. Um, and that's easy to change. 
we've got this little option here that will give us that. The vertical timeline is kind of more of a traditional technique. Um, Disney sort of created this development or this uh, style, but if we're used to working in After Effects, we do have that option uh, to create a horizontal one. All right, so making sure that I have my selection tool, uh, what I can do is I can actually click on this empty frame and I get this little box here and I can click and drag that out uh, to create uh, my timeline. All right, and I can then jump up and down that. But before I can actually create any frames, I need to right click and I need to say, um, buh, 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 buh. I want to create a, I believe if I say, insert let's say insert above um, so column one column two and if I right click on my frame I have the option for a new level right so we don't call these layers we call them levels uh, and then the actual different um, let's call them timelines are then labeled columns so if I say new level I get this little box pop up here I can label it a b c I can label it uh, color whatever I want to label that um, I'm not gonna mess around with frames here it's just gonna sit here unless you know exactly how long you want this um, level to be uh, so I could set that to like 24 frames if I wanted to and then I have options for types now we've got an option for a vector level and a raster level um, a tunes raster level or just a, a standard raster level and scan level all right so I'm going to create a vector level first uh, and I'm going to say apply and I'm going to say okay now for some reason on my machine whenever I say okay it generates a second layer uh, a second level but um, that's not going to bother me too much so the color for that is a sort of yellow and if i grab another empty frame and say new level and i select raster level i'm going to say apply and cancel okay so that's how i don't get uh, a second layer and that is green all right so Basically, my understanding vectors being mathematical would, would allow me to scale up and down without um, losing quality or pixelating. Raster being that if I scale up or down, um, well, more up than down, I'll start having some pixelation issues. Um, if that's not the case, I'll correct myself uh, in the description below or in a next, like a future tutorial. But for now, I believe that that is how it works. Okay, so again, uh, I can now click on these columns um, and I can then grab this little gray bar, drag that out to however many frames I want. Um, and there we go. So these layers or columns, uh, if I sort of um, use the horizontal timeline, it's easier to understand. These act as uh, layers in After Effects or um, InDesign, whatever Adobe Suite you're using, in the sense that whatever's on top, the visual hierarchy is going to take place. All right. So I can then click and drag uh, to move these um, sort of around. Um, these are now currently selecting. Uh, let's see if I click and drag. No. Okay. Well, when I get to that, I will address it. Sorry. Like I said, I'm still learning. Um, but this is essentially how we go about setting up our space. And I will now sort of jump into the next tutorial. We'll dive into the actual sort of creating assets and all the different um, sort of technicalities of that. So like I said, if it was a shit tutorial and you didn't get it at all, I've linked the descriptions below. Um, and yeah, feel free to follow any of those as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a question. Um, feel free to drop me a, a comment below. Um, the kind folks over at Noble Frugo Studio uh, are very good at replying to questions as well. Um, so yeah, that would be great as well if you get stuck on anything like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope this made sense and have a great day further. Ciao.